It's Wednesday, baby. It's hump day. We can get over this shit now. We can get slide right into the next weekend. And uh, no problems, baby. Well, there's lots of problems, but that's why we're here to discuss them. Woo, pig. How about it there, Randy? Randy Peterson from Bella Vista, Arkansas. He sent me this shirt quite a while back ago. I haven't worn it, but just that one time on the show when I noticed that, well, I thought, well, I better give this, give this another shout out. So, Randy, uh, woo pig, buddy, uh, go Razorbacks. And, and always remind him that gets me in trouble with the uh, Texas teams when I do that. That's all right. Anyway, what's going on? Well, I have a correction to make. I made a mistake, evidently, uh, in a story that I covered that I don't know if it's uh, I made a mistake or what. But the story has changed, so I have to make a correction. And it's about the moron story. You know, Tillerson, call it old Donnie boy, a freaking moron. And uh, I had originally thought, as was reported, that it was in reference to Donnie's speech to the Boy Scouts of America. You know, where he tries to tell them, you know, if you save enough money, you can get you a big old boat and go offshore and take little girls with you and stuff like that. And, you know... Money, 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 that was the, and how great Donald was, that was his speech, the inspiring speech to the Boy Scouts, remember that shit? Well, I thought it was about that, evidently it's not, evidently the story evolved, and it's about, uh, they say that Donnie was overheard telling Tillerson that Donnie wanted to increase our nuclear arsenal tenfold, ten times more than we have now. And when Donnie walked away, Tillerson called him a freaking moron. And uh, Donnie says that's not true. Says it never happened and uh, all that. You know, of course, uh, Donnie always says that shit. So now we got NBC saying that Donnie said that, uh, that he wanted to increase our nuclear arsenal tenfold. And that's why Tillerson called him a fucking moron. And uh, Donnie saying it uh, didn't happen. So out of those two, which one do you think I should believe? <laughs> Hands down, baby, I believe NBC. Because I don't believe a stinking thing that comes out of that lying man's mouth. Remember, he called us and told he told us all that the Boy Scouts of America called him and said it was the greatest speech in the world that the Boy Scouts had ever gotten, and that was a downright lie. He said the NFL called him too. That was a lie. Donnie lies about everything, so I assume he's lying about this. But not only that, because there's a story up there that says... There's a quote from one of the reporters at NBC that says, Is he stupid? Doesn't he realize we have it on tape? So, yeah, maybe there's a tape with Donnie saying he wants to increase it tenfold, and there you can hear probably Tillerson in the background calling him a moron. I don't know if the tape exists. That's what they're saying. So we have a dispute as to why Tillerson called him a moron. And, uh, yeah, I, I believe NBC over, over Donnie the lying sack of shit that we got, the one that lies all the time, yeah, I'd believe NBC over him any day of the week, and, uh, so, uh, I don't know, we're, we're, we're he's pissing up a tree with the, with the North Korea, we're flying bombers and fighter jets real close over there so they can see us putting around, you know, and North Korea is now saying that we have lit the wick of war, so, uh, so we got two lunatics wanting to start a third world war, a uh, world war, just go after it with nukes all over the place. That's Donnie's plan. Evidently, remember, he says he's smarter than the generals and all that shit. Yeah, Donnie's a big dumbass trying to play badass. That's it. Anyway, what else is going on? What happened to Carter Page? Remember Carter Page? Carter Page was Donnie's senior advisor way back during the campaign and right after the election and whatnot, but all of a sudden he disappeared when the Russian shit came along. Now, I remember this fella. I remember Carter Page being on several talk shows and newscasts, and he always had that big grin on his face. He was, and as a matter of fact, he was even called out for that, smiling like that, because he always was insinuating he knew something, but he wasn't, he, wasn't, he couldn't say it. He's, he, he was always taking that, I, I know lots of things, but I can't tell you. And then grin and just smile and shit. Yeah, yeah, he was wrapped up in that Russian shit too. Well, now the Senate Intel Committee wants to talk to him. Say, come on over here, Carter Page, we want to talk to you and find out what you want to say. And he refused. 
he refused and he made the comment that it's, if he is forced to go in front of the Senate Intel Committee, he will take the Fifth Amendment, he will take the Fifth Amendment and not testify on the grounds that it might incriminate him. On the grounds that you might be incriminated on a crime if you open your mouth. Well, Lord Carter, before you were all happy and proud that you had your 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 information, that you knew things that nobody else knew, and you just grinning up a starve and just eating up all that attention you were getting. You were called out on it. Aren't you eating up this attention? No, no, no. And he just a smiling away on every talk show there was. And uh, so now he says he's going to take the fifth if he's called. You know, Carter. The truth will set you free, buddy. The truth will set you free if it comes out of your mouth. If the truth comes out of somebody else's mouth, well, the truth will put you in jail, buddy. Don't you know that shit yet? You smiling with all the cameras around you before. Yeah, it not might, might not be so pleasant next time there's a camera in your face. It might be taking your mug shot when you're arrested and thrown in freaking prison. Yeah, take the Fifth Amendment. Mueller's going to find all of it out anyway. If your dumbass knew, believe me, lots of other people knew. Because I can't believe they trusted you with shit anyway. Anyway, what else is going on? You know, I said before that it was our generation, baby boomers, that we grew up realizing what industry was doing to our planet, to the environment to our rivers, our lakes, our air, everything around us. And uh, we decided to do something about it. And we put politicians in that believe like that. And, and we built a society based on pres preserving this earth that we live on. We, we built the EPA. And then we let Scott Pruitt in. And then Donnie the Dick came along and put Scott Pruitt in charge of the Environmental Protection agency to protect the environment yeah he's a dick he's a hack for the oil companies and industries he doesn't give a shit what he you put in your river i don't he doesn't give a crap anything about a mountain or a bird or a bug or anything else that you bleeding heart liberals love you know he doesn't give a shit about any of it air water land none of it matters money matters money business matters he is not in charge of the Environmental Protection Agency. He's in charge of the let's rape the earth policy. Let's get rid of every environmental regulation that we ever came up with. Throw it in a ditch. Let's get after it. And that's what he's doing up by Bristol Bay. Bristol Bay, Alaska is home to one of the world's largest areas for salmon. Uh, salmon fisheries up there. That's where we, half the world gets the salmon from up around Bristol Bay. Now, there was a mining company that wanted to mine up in this certain area up in Alaska that the watershed feeds into Bristol Bay. So, the government, under Obama, did a three-year study on the impact of what that would do to Bristol Bay. And they decided, no, you can't do that. They, you cannot open pit mine an area such as that that is so pristine it feeds into an area that supplies the world with a lot of food. Screw that shit. There's money to be made. Yeah, so uh, that's what uh, that's what old Pruitt did. Now, Pruitt met with a guy named, uh, what's his name? Oh, I'm on, I don't want the wrong page there right now. Oh, his name is Tom Collier. He's the CEO of Pebble Mining Limited. And uh, so what happened? He's the guy that wants to big a big pit mine they say is larger than the, the island of Manhattan and deeper than the Grand Canyon for gold and copper. That's what they want to do in those public lands up there. Well, he met with old Pruitt and in one hour, meeting only with this asshole from the mining company, he reversed that whole three-year study without any input from anybody else in a one-hour meeting Half hour after the meeting, he puts out a memo saying that he wanted to reverse the, the uh, regulations preventing Pebble from going up there and mining all that gold and copper. Now, whew, Pebble Mining also, prior, had a lawsuit against the EPA 
against them for this. Now, in that same little meeting, guess what? Oh yeah, lawsuit forgiven, thrown out. EPA dropped it. I mean, Scott, I mean, this guy, uh, Collier, dropped it because Scott Pruitt gave him what he wanted. They're going to rape this country, baby, anywhere you want. I'll tell you something else that bothers me about this shit. I don't even have to read. You know, that's public land, and it's all the same shit with all this other stuff. You know, Alaska, Alaska, I don't know if they still do it, but Alaska used to send out every one of their natural citizens of Alaska a check every year to pay for them, I mean, to give them the money that the oil and gas produced in the state of Alaska. They get a check from their state of Alaska. That's our gold, and that's our copper underneath that land. Who do you think's going to get the profits the same way the oil and gas hold them? Drill on public land. Okay, you're going to lease it to you. You can drill over there. Whose oil is that? That's our oil. Who gets it? Exxon, Mobil, who, Shell, all of them. They get that oil. They sell it back to us. Guess whose oil that is? That's our oil. Guess whose gold and copper that is? That's ours. That's ours. But, but here's the way the deal is. Well, we're going to go in there and mine on public land. We're going to get this stuff out of there. Tear up the land. We're going to take all the gold and silver, and uh, you can have what's left. Wait a minute. Why don't we all get a check from that gold and silver? Why don't we all get a check for the oil and gas industry exploring on public lands and getting the oil and gas and the gold and everything else they dig out for their profit? And we see shit. Half of them don't pay taxes. They got loopholes out the ass because that's what our Congress and Senate does is pass loopholes for big business so they don't have to pay anything. I swear it's a big... I'm not no conspiracy theorist. I'm just saying, you give a company the right to, to mine or drill on public land, then the oil and the gas and everything else underneath that public land belongs to the public. Don't happen that way, though. Screw the public. It's big business, baby. It's big government. They want the money. Screw the little guy. He don't need shit. Healthcare? No, 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 no. We don't have enough money for that. Yeah. Anyway, what else is going on? I don't want to get lost here. I got uh, I got the correction on the moron thing. I got the Carter Page. North Korea is going to lift the wick of war. And EPA, Scott Pruitt. What else could I talk about? Roy Moore. We're done with Roy Moore. The election ain't here yet. You know, he's the guy that beat out Luther Strange. Luther Strange was backed by Trump. Roy Moore was backed by Bannon and the rest of the right-wing whack jobs. And the cockroach crew. And uh, so Roy Moore, what's he in the news for? Well, he's not in the news. Well, he sort of is in the news. He's sort of in the news because his son, Carter Moore. Caleb. Caleb Moore. I'm sorry. I got mixed up with Carter. Caleb Moore. Yep. He's saying that there's a plot against him. Against Caleb, the son of Roy Moore of Alabama. You know, the ex-Supreme Court Justice of of Alabama, the man's going to run for senator of Alabama because he's a good, God-fearing, gun toting nut. And they'll all vote for him. Anyway, his son is now griping because after his ninth arrest, three drug-related Xanax possession and other drugs, DUI, and uh, trespassing for poaching on other people's land, he's been arrested nine times and now he's out there on the TV or the news saying that it's all a conspiracy because his daddy is against the LGBT community and they're all picking on him. Caleb is being picked on because his daddy is against the gay people. Couldn't be because he's a little shit that likes to do illegal things and gets caught. Couldn't be because he's just a little crap that thinks his daddy is who he is. Remember, I, I, we got news for you, Caleb. We don't care who your daddy is. We don't care who you think your daddy is. We don't give a shit about your daddy. Because your daddy doesn't give a shit about the laws of this country, and that's what he taught his son. He taught his son to screw the law and do whatever you want, and we'll get you out of it, boy. Anyway, that's old Roy Moore down in Alabama. I'm sure he brought his kid up with good God-fearing, you know, religious bringing just, you know, follow the good book, son. Yeah. What book is that? How to Cheat Your Fellow Man? Anyway, he's being picked on. And that's just sad, ain't it? We'll all feel bad for Caleb. Oh, poor son. 
Anyway, we also have another mystery. I have a mystery because I got a box. I got a package in the mail. I got a package in the mail. And there's no return address on it. Now, when I got this box, there was a small piece of tape right here. But you can see where the tape used to go all the way across the box and down the edges. Well, just had a little piece of tape over here holding it. Well, that's a pretty good sized box. And when I opened it, and there's my address again, well, there was two things in this box. I love the bumper sticker. Box News. Because it's cheaper than a lobotomy. I love that. That's going up on the board. And a pair of socks and a package from John's Crafty so Crazy Socks. I'm sorry. And they're neat socks. They're with a Democratic donkey on them. And uh, Mama's done claimed them. But anyway, that's what's in there. And a little note that says, thank you. I hope you love the socks, John. But there's no other thing in the box. I'm, I'm concerned because it was obviously the box had been opened. And there was a small piece of tape, like I said, holding the box shut. That's a big box for a pair of socks. Now, I'm just concerned, was there anything else that was in the box? And one of our fans sent us something that didn't get here. Or just not have a return address. I don't know. All I know is John sent it. So, John, I appreciate it. And, and uh, we're going to put the, the uh, bumper sticker up on the board. And uh, believe me, you're going to see this. Well, you won't see them, but Mama will have those socks on her feet. She likes those socks. My wife is extremely shy. Uh, Mama's not seen very many times and uh, doesn't even like to have her picture taken. She fusses every time. I'm trying to get one up there. She'll hear this and tell me to shut up. Anyway, she's the most wonderful woman in the world. She's my political advisor, and she's everything else to me and uh if it wasn't for her i wouldn't be here so i remind myself of that every day anyway randy whoa pig buddy i appreciate the shirt y'all always uh i always get uh, uplifted when i get a package i love the socks and i love the bumper sticker to go up john whoever you are i appreciate you putting the comments there buddy so uh we all know who sent the socks and uh, i appreciate it very much anyway that's about all i got it's uh, Wednesday. We're going to head right into Thursday. Uh, get Thursday done. You know what Friday is. Boom, you're right back into the weekend. And uh, I guess when you're retired, that really doesn't mean anything anymore. I ain't been working in a couple of years. So my job's right here at the house nowadays. So I'm happy with that. And uh, I'm, I'm a lot happy with our Blue Dot family of friends that we've made. I made a little post. And uh, just because I wanted y'all to know that, that, that I do this. And, and, and the comments, the mail, the messages, I never thought in my life, you know, almost 65 now. And, and I like till I get this old thing. Look at this beard. It's coming up on a year, people. This beard is getting mighty long. And I want y'all to know, underneath this beard, I shaved this beard off. I look, I've been told, well, you look like a young Tom Cruise. Without this beard, I look like a young Tom Cruise. Can't you see it? Anyway, the beard's getting long, people. I need a reason to shut it off and cut it. And the only reason it's going to come off is when we get this ass hat out of our house. So let's do that. Poor John looks like Rip Ram Winkle or something. You know, I'm getting to be that ZZ top link down here and stuff like that. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Like, share, and subscribe. John Bernabo, Blue Dot in Texas. And uh, John Bernabo speaks on Facebook. John Bernabo and, and a Blue Dot in Texas on twi Twitter and and, uh, but the important thing is 2018 is coming up faster than we can even think. It's almost a year since the election. And uh, we're streaming towards 2018, and we have to be ready because there's lots of seats that's opened up, and we need to take them. Uh, I'm going to start highlighting some of the candidates that we're going to be running in different areas. I got one. I was looking at him. I can't remember his name right now because my mind is full of other stuff. Anyway, uh, stay tuned. Let's pay attention to find out who's right. Was it about the Boy Scouts, or was it because... Donnie wants 10,000 more nuclear bombs to toss around. I bet on NBC being the truthful one there. Anyway, y'all take it easy, and uh, we'll see you later.